What's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Jonners. This is episode 105 and today is another one of our Turnbuckle TV interviews. I'll be introducing our special guest very, very soon. But if you've not come across Turnbuckle TV, what are you waiting for? Um, as you're aware, Turnbuckle TV is easily the best UK-based pro wrestling on-demand service available today. With over 30 channels to choose from, shining a light on the very best independent wrestling talent from around the UK, simply go to turnbuckletv.com to subscribe to over 30 channels as i said featuring more uk indie talent and more uk indie wrestling that you can shake a stick at for only 3.99 per month there's also quite a bit of free content on there as well let's go ahead and check it out today that's turnbuckle tv i'll say it one more time turnbuckle tv.com and that leads us very nicely to our next interview in partnership with turnbuckle tv uh with one of the brightest most talented uh, most in demand and up and coming uk wrestlers on the scene right now uh she's the current kamikaze pro live champion Chantel jordan so the bad girl is on the wrestling with podcast good afternoon Chantel. how are you good afternoon i'm good thank you Good, 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 good. We're really honoured to have you on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. Uh, it's something that we've been, you know, trying to uh, make happen for a while now. You've definitely been on my wish list of people that I wanted to interview. And uh, fortunately, Turnbuckle TV helped to make that happen. Uh, so before we get into the nitty gritty of your career and uh, bring us right up to date with what you're up to in your wrestling career, we've got to look back at 2019 or, or indeed the last two, you know, two years one i think you've been on the scene now for just under two years yeah, when, you, when you look back at your your short career you must have to kind of pinch yourself sometimes at everything that you've achieved uh when you look back at everything that's happened to you in the last uh, 20 months or so uh could you kind of like sum up how how this time has been uh, kind of remarkable really you, you do probably just have to kind of stand back and pinch yourself sometimes to make sure that you're not dreaming oh it's literally like right. It's been amazing, and like looking back at everything that's happened, it's like it's proper overwhelming. So obviously, I never thought I'd have the experience, like the opportunity to wrestle. Obviously, Joey Janela, yeah, Stana as well, Sadie Gibbs. It's like it's all surreal, and like it just honestly means a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, and to think you're you're less than two years into your pro wrestling career. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, I mean, you, you, it is mad. But to, I mean, on on Saturday, I think you like wrestled your last match uh, for Kamikaze Pro in Birmingham at the Collingwood Arena, where it all started for you, where you made your debut and you wrestled uh, Lucia Lee uh, for your championship. Your championship was on the line. Um, I, I saw that promo that Lucia kind of put on Facebook, where you know she burned that photo of the two of yeah. you, setting up this match really, really well. Um, how did the match go on Saturday night in your home promotion, Kamikaze Pro, in, in the place? where you made your debut um, and uh, against somebody that you know really really well it must have been a pretty special night Saturday yeah um, the match went really well I think like I really enjoyed it and obviously having the opportunity to wrestle Lucy Lee like my best friend one of my closest people in wrestling was honestly like it was just amazing and obviously in the place where I debuted yeah so it all just it was all special to me and I just I loved it yeah, I'm sure um, every time you're back at the, the Colin, Collingwood Centre, it kind of makes you uh, feel really proud of what you've achieved. But uh, let, let's go right back then, uh, Chantel, to, to when you first kind of clapped eyes on professional wrestling. Um, I understand that your your, your parents or your family um, are heavily into pro wrestling, and they, that, that must have been kind of how you got into it. But uh, what was kind of your, some of your earliest recollections of, of kind of watching pro wrestling on TV, some of the characters that stood out and some of the things that you remember? Um, so obviously my dad come over one time because he used to stop over and he brought like these old wrestling tapes so I had like Triple H on it, it was like Hunter Hearns Helmsley, I had China, obviously DX and like I was just watching it and then just, I don't know why it just really, I like, just really got into it and then I continued watching it and then obviously there was, then there was Beth Phoenix, obviously China again, Lita and then they all just like inspired me and motivated me to want to be a wrestler and obviously yeah. I saw the um, <clears throat> Undertaker versus I think it was Mick Foley I think in that cage thing where he chucked him off and I just like oh I just to do hell it in a cell yeah. <laughs> wow yeah 
Yeah, and and you mentioned some great names there and some great moments, and uh, in particular, you know, some uh, icons in the wrestling industry from a, a female perspective. You mentioned China and uh, you know Beth Phoenix, yeah. two two kind of massive icons in the in the wrestling business. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I can only imagine that once you kind of saw what you just explained, it, it definitely inspired you to kind of want to want to become a wrestler yourself uh now you're renowned for using a lot of kickboxing and mma in your matches Chantel. but um yep. when did you kind of first get into the kickboxing because i understand the kickboxing uh came first it kind of you know it, it was there before pro wrestling was i suppose yep. in terms of your training but tell us a bit about your your mma training your kickboxing uh career before you got into wrestling then so at that time obviously when i was young um <clears throat> basically like I wasn't really doing anything much. And, like, my mum said to me, oh, you need to find, like, something to do because, obviously, you need to know how to defend yourself and everything. I was like, yeah, true and all that. And, like, so, obviously, I didn't choose to do kickboxing. At the time, obviously, my mum just brought me into it because, obviously, she was doing it as well. So mm-hmm. I started doing it. And then just ever since, I just, like, I was proper enjoying it. So I continued doing it. And then it just, like, stuck me. And then, obviously, I got all my belts and I started teaching kickboxing and then I decided like to watch MMA I really enjoyed MMA so I started training MMA and then just continued it from there so it's like always fighting's always been in my blood basically yeah yeah and uh, I think we spoke off air that you've been um, practicing kickboxing for uh, 10 or so years now uh, yeah, when did you years. when did you first start training so you must have been about 15 16 when you first started training um, so I was about uh, so, sorry, five, five or six, five or six. If, if uh, you've been doing it for eleven years, so quite yeah, a long time. Six, yeah. yeah, brilliant. And uh, and then you got kind of you know uh, into your MMA and things like that. So obviously it's it's, it's very uh, kind of uh, noticeable in your kind of wrestling style as well. Yeah. The kickboxing with the strikes and uh, the MMA, certainly with the grappling and some of the submission holds. Um, okay. But um, how, how would you describe your, your wrestling style then? Because I mean, I've seen quite a few of your matches and, you know, you do like to mix it up, uh, you know, with, with the kickboxing and with the MMA, but you also quite adapt to, at the suplexes. You're not afraid to jump off the top rope as well. Yeah. You <laughs> really do mix it up. Um, so it's so kind of, you know, how would you describe your, your wrestling style to, to the listeners? And um, has there been any kind of one thing or any wrestlers or individuals that have influenced your style as well over the years? Um, I wouldn't, I don't know how I'd classify my wrestling, to be honest. I think it's like mainly striker, but also mm. it's a hard one. So I wouldn't, say I'm, I wouldn't say I'm technical at all. It's probably just be like striker, and like adrenaline seeker kind of type thing. Yeah, yeah, I think that sums it up really, really well. It really yeah. does. And like, um, go on. Uh, I'm like proper influenced by Chris Ridgway. Yeah, good choice. And then there's obviously uh, what was it as well? Beth Phoenix as well. Like totally inspires me a lot as well. Just yeah. due to the other sides of wrestling. So it's yes. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's some some good names there. Chris Ridgway, yeah, he's definitely got that striker, that kind of MMA vibe, hasn't he? But um, yeah. um, and then kind of moving on, uh, so you obviously got into wrestling as a fan at a very, very young age. You got into your kind of mixed martial arts and your kickboxing at a young age. When did you kind of first get the realisation that you wanted to start training to be a pro wrestler then? Because you made your debut, which we'll touch on in a minute, at the age of 14. You've been yeah. wrestling for under two years. So at what age did you kind of start training and, and kind of what kind of uh, influenced you to start training to be a pro wrestler? So uh, basically, I went to a show in Preston. So it's PCW Wrestling. Yep. And it had like Tommy Dreamer versus Tyson Tebow and I had Kevin Steen on the show, um, and basically I just watched that, and I really enjoyed it. Like the fans, like it was like really close up. The rest was like right next to you, and know, I just proper enjoyed it. So I was like, "Mum, I want to be a wrestler." And then obviously we were finding places. There wasn't anywhere until obviously we saw Kamikaze Pro. I started training there. It was it's pretty local, it was like thirty minutes away. Yeah, so it yeah. wasn't too bad. And then I started that obviously at the age of ten. And then continue to stick at it. I just, I just love it. 
Yeah, so um, I, I think we're talking along the same lines here. Was it the Kamikaze Pro Dojo? Uh, because yeah. I know that they're they're kind of quite renowned for 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 their training and for bringing in their kind of their new starters. Um, so you started at the age of ten. That's amazing. So um, t- tell tell us a bit about that process. Kind of when you first stepped through the you know the the, the dojo doors on day one. <laughs> Were you kind of uh, nervous? Were you apprehensive? Um, and how did that first day's training go? Because having spoken to a few wrestlers and people that are training, they said that when they first started taking bumps, you know, it almost put them off to go back on the second <laughs> occasion. But uh, what was your kind of uh, your story um, when you first started training at the dojo? So when I first went into that, I was just waiting in like the waiting room. And I thought at first, obviously, because Pete Dunn used to teach there and Brian Smile, I was yeah. just waiting. I was like so nervous and obviously it was another guy who came and it was Marshall X who like he actually teach there now and um I was like proper so nervous and we got into there started training it was like lots of cardio like 200 squats I was like mate I'm so dead right now (laughs) uh, obviously he separated us me and my brother to one side and got us doing like some bumps like front bumps flip bumps and just the basics tech tech wrestling as well yeah and uh, like I don't know like something just like clicked in my head that this is what I was needed to do something I needed for a long time and it was just it was just mad I just really enjoyed the session and just wanted to go back every time ever since then yeah, and, and as you explained at the top of the interview, you've got a bit of a fighting background with your kickboxing and with your mixed martial arts. And uh, this kind of, you know, you're obviously very adaptable with going from one fighting uh, sport to another. So I suppose wrestling must have come fairly natural to you. Yeah, it did. Yeah, and because uh, you obviously we're familiar with other people that have come from amateur wrestling or uh, or MMA, UFC that have adapted so well and so quickly and so naturally to pro wrestling, and that's obviously kind of what helped you is having that bit of a background in in uh, another fighting style. Um, so then you 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 obviously training for a few years, and as I mentioned earlier on in the episode, you had your debut match at the age of fourteen. Yeah. Um, so June twenty eighteen, where you had your your first match. Now, take us back to that first match because I'm sure it still lives with you today as fresh as it you know as if it was yesterday and it was for Kamikaze Pro the Collingwood Arena as we mentioned a very special venue for you against Dave yeah. Scott Preston uh, and so uh, it, it was your first match your first match being an intergender match and it was a match that you won um, so how were the nerves before you kind of stepped through the curtain uh, how did you feel afterwards and uh, how do you feel the match went Firstly, I felt I felt so nervous. Like I was literally bricking it because obviously the promoter told me, "Oh yeah, we want you to wrestle." As I like, so I was trying to get my gear sorted like proper quick, and I got it like the day before. And um, so obviously when I got there, I kind of sorted the match out. I was literally oh, I was so nervous before I went out. And then like obviously the match happened, and I felt so proud. I felt like I'd done my I done my trainer one as well, so I got back yeah. and I just literally just burst into tears because I <laughs> it's just emotional. I'm like my wrestler now. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, that's it. it. And, and you finally uh, broke your duck. You had your first match and I'm sure everybody was super proud of you. And uh, and like I say, that was less than two years ago. And uh, yeah, yeah what, what a fantastic start in the business. Now, let's, let's talk a little bit about your, your nickname then, because we spoke a little bit about this off air. But um, you originally came into the business with the nickname The Baddest Girl on the Planet. So tell us a little bit about how that the origin of that nickname. Um, but And then, as we discussed earlier, you had to change your nickname nickname or you decided to change your nickname to the bad girl um so tell us about the origins of the first nickname the baddest girl on the planet and then why you decided to change it and uh why you think it kind of suits your character as well so many people obviously don't know this but originally when i was in training i was gonna call myself cj boom because i was always constantly wearing caps and everything and then i was ah. kind of a chav like type thing yeah. but obviously my trainer pulled me aside and said that's not you you're a fighter, you're Chantal Jordan, um, and you're a bad girl. And I was like, okay. And then he had obviously the bad man martial arts. And I was thinking to myself, hmm, okay. He was like, use something along them terms. So I was like, okay. And then I just come up with the baddest girl on the planet because 
obviously I do the kicks and everything and quite lethal and hard hitting. And then yeah. a couple of months later into it, obviously pull me aside and told me, obviously because Ronda Rousey was around and calling herself the baddest woman on the planet. Yeah. I didn't want anyone to think that. I was trying to like copy her or anything, so like mock her or anything. So I thought, oh yeah, I'll just, I had that match with Marshall X, so I thought I may as well take my trainer's name, but just use her as the bad girl. And then from then, it's just like, it's just like stuck. It's pretty sick, to be honest. It really is. It really is. And you've obviously got uh, your, your nickname emblazoned on your on your gear when you go out there every single week. Um, so that's really, really cool. I love the nickname. I really do. But uh, let, let's kind of get right up to speed. And so the, you're the current uh, two-time Kamikaze Pro Live champion. Uh, so you won your first Kamikaze Pro Live title against uh, Luke Douglas um, in May of last year. So you're still yeah. kind of only into your first year when you won your first championship. Uh, then you lost the title, the Kamikaze Pro Live Championship, for all of seven days. Then you regained it again, beating uh, Luke Douglas uh, a week after losing it. And uh, you, you're still the Kamikaze Pro Live champion in your second reign through to yeah. today and that's uh, been uh, about eight months now into your second reign now is it fair to say that the kamikaze pro is, is definitely your kind of your home group your home promotion uh the fans in kamikaze they, they definitely see you as theirs um and uh, are firmly behind everything you do Chantel. but w- what do you enjoy most um uh, about working for kamikaze pro in particular um and uh, you know you must love the fans the atmosphere uh, but but tell us what you love so much about your home promotion kamikaze pro I honestly just love everything about them, to be honest. Like, the environment backstage, the atmosphere. Like, the fans are just amazing. They're, like, they're so, like, supportive of me and everything. And everyone backstage, all the trainees are just all supportive. And it really yeah. does, like, mean a lot. So it makes it more of a happy place to work for. Yeah. Yeah, and you've obviously got the support of, you know, the management and the backstage team and the fans. You seem to have a really good rapport with the fans. You know, you're definitely yeah. a, a fan favourite. Uh, what does that mean to you to kind of have their support when you go out resting um, each weekend? It means a lot, honestly. Like, I'm so grateful like for everyone who supports me. And like, just constantly have their back. It's just, it just push, motivates me even more to do better. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So besides uh, being the Kamikaze Pro Live champion, uh, when we discuss this off air, I think I've got uh, I got this right, but you're the current Southwest Wrestling Women's Champion in Cinderford. Um, you're the current WPW Women's Champion as well. Uh, I did mention the Cov Pro Women's Champion, but you, you've recently lost that, that title, I understand. But yeah. what does it mean uh, to you to represent these excellent promotions as their champion so early into your career? It means a lot to me, I think. You're also, like, given the opportunity to just, like, showcase them companies everywhere. It's, like, it's honestly great. I'm so grateful. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You're doing a wonderful job as champion. You really are. You're representing those belts with uh, with a huge amount of passion and pride. But uh, let's talk about one match in particular then, Chantel. So uh, uh, I'm going to take you back to the, the ladder match, the, the bank on it ladder match that took place last September when you went up against uh, pretty much the who's who of the UK indie wrestling scene. There was uh, yourself, obviously Giselle Shaw, Lana Rostin, Millie McKenzie, Vader Scott and, and Shana. And, and you won that epic ladder match uh, tell us about going up against um you know that amazing lineup of uk and international talent and how physical and hard-hitting the match was and i have to ask you was that your first ladder match uh yeah that was my second ladder match but it was like my first proper one yeah um but like going up against all them girls it honestly it felt amazing like every single one of them were like dream opponents to me and like goals so obviously I've always wanted to wrestle Giselle. So, like, stepping in the room with Giselle was honestly, like, it was great. Overwhelming. But I still want to see match with her, still. Yep. <laughs> but, um, obviously, Minnie McKenzie has always been someone I've looked up to. So, I used to train with her at Kamigazi. And then, obviously, there was a time where we separated for a bit, but then we got back together and started working more shows together. Um, Lana Austin, I think she's just a pleasure to, like, work with all the while. Like, she's just sick yeah and she's doing some really good things as well i know that she's been wrestling quite a lot in japan recently and uh, uh yeah. her career seems to be going from strength to strength i'm so proud of her always like i'm just like so grateful to have the opportunity to be in there with like such amazing women who are like one of the like 
pretty much the top wrestlers in the UK, I'd say. Yeah, and it was a, it was a pretty tough match, Chantal. I mean, it was pretty hard hitting. Like I say, you made full use of the ladders. Uh, you know, everybody diving um, over the yeah. top and uh, back inside and off the ladders and all sorts. But uh, how how did you feel after the match? Was you pretty sore? Did you feel beat up? Um, so obviously I did a flip going off the ladder, and so I did feel like pretty sore to be honest. But it's wrestling. <laughs> Gonna take injuries at some point. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And I've had this um, conversation and, and asked a similar question to other wrestlers that I've interviewed in the past. But how, how do you feel with all the adrenaline after a match? Say, you know, middle of the night on a Saturday, you, you have a match that might only go 10 or 15 minutes. But then a lot of the wrestlers that I've spoken to have that adrenaline pumping through their body for the rest of the night. They can't sleep, uh, but it doesn't bother them because, you know, they're still kind of living off the adrenaline from that match. How does it affect you? How do you feel uh, following a match like that? Um, I like, so I'll have adrenaline for like a long time. And then all of a sudden my adrenaline will just die down. And it'll be yeah. like, I'll go all tired all of a sudden. But it's like you still know that you've had a good time. So it's like the adrenaline's still kind of there, if you get me. Yeah, yeah. But the, but then eventually you crash and yeah. uh, then you rest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Um, and then kind of a more recent match, uh, in fact, a, a tournament you were involved in, the, the Fierce Females Tournament to crown their new champion at their uh, disgusting animal show in the shed in Glasgow only last month. Uh, so you, you lost in the final to uh, Giselle Shaw, I understand, but um, you did manage to beat uh, Rosie Knight and Danny Luna on the way to the final in that tremendous match with, with Giselle in the final of the tournament. So how do you enjoy one-night tournaments, the one-night tournament concept? And uh, do you have to prepare any differently um, or wrestle a, a slightly different or maybe more reserved wrestling style knowing that you might have several matches in one evening instead of just the one um i think it's like it depends to be honest like obviously with me i'll just like push myself through every single one i'll give it everything i've got and like yeah. even though I'm, like i just think it's like yeah it's just mental like yeah i just think you just gotta keep like pushing yourself and just do your best and that's yeah yeah I suppose we spoke a, a moment ago about adrenaline. I suppose after the first match, the adrenaline's kind of running throughout the night and yeah. it doesn't matter kind of how many opponents or how many matches you have in front of you. You just keep going until you it's can't right. go anymore, I suppose. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So that that was pretty good. But uh, like I say, unfortunately, you lost to Giselle in the final there. But um, uh, let's talk about the UK scene and kind of the, the, the female wrestling scene in general then, Chantal, which you're a very big part of. So, I mean, the female talent on the UK indie circuit or the indie indie scene around the UK at the moment is is completely unreal. Uh, yeah. Probably the best I've ever known it, to be honest with you. You know, they're, they're not just performing at a very high level uh, on the UK indie scene, but all over the world now, as we explained with Lana Rostin going to Japan and one or two others. How do you feel when you see the likes of, say, Danny Luna and Valkyrie getting signed to NXT UK and there's so many others catching the eye of promotions from all over the world, including NXT over in the States, WWE, AEW, Ring of Honor, Shimmer and Stardom. Um, how do you feel when you see these these friends of yours on the UK circuit kind of moving on to kind of things outside of the UK and bigger and badder promotions? I, uh, I feel so proud because like, obviously I know some of them like pretty well. It just like means a lot to me like to see them doing so well. And it inspires yeah. me and motivates me to like push myself even more so that maybe one day I'll get the same success as what they have. Yeah, yeah. I think you're well on the way, to be honest with you. You're definitely well on the way. Um, but a couple of years, I'm sure you'll be uh, on everybody's lips, most definitely. But um, I just want to talk about some of the talent um, that you've had the pleasure of sharing the ring with. But you've been in the ring with the likes of, uh, uh, you've shared, shared the ring with the likes of Zaya Brookside, Giselle Shaw, as we mentioned, Jade, Shana, Eva Lee, Slana Rosti and Danny Luna and so many yeah. more amazing top names in the UK and, and uh, the international kind of scene. Um, but I loved the match that you had with Millie McKenzie at Frost Fight 7 at the end of January. So last yeah. month when you two went at it at Frost Fight 7, uh, you two went through a battle and a war during that one. <laughs> you know, in, in fact, Millie... I think she has to go down as one of your, I, I know you're quite close to Millie, but one of your fiercest rivals and one of your fiercest opponents as well since yeah, you came definitely. onto the scene. Tell us about wrestling Millie, because you two seem to have so much chemistry in the ring. Uh, you two just seem to be the perfect opponents for one another. Um, so obviously, I've known Millie, I've known Millie a long time now. I've seen trained with her. I've been at most, like, most of her shows with her and everything. And I, it just felt 
so great to finally like have a match about it after everyone wanted it. And obviously yeah. been teasing it for a while now and then it finally happened. It just like I don't know, like when you like know someone like pretty well, there's like you don't know whether there's obviously there's gonna be chemistry there, but like, when we had the match it was like there was just so much chemistry there it honestly it just it meant a lot and I just wanna wrestle even more. Yeah. And and you two, I mean, you didn't hold back. You were knocking lumps out of one another. You really were. But some of the yeah. moves and the suplexes, I mean, she's known as Suplex Millie. Um, but so you were giving as good as you were getting in that match. Some of your suplexes were pretty awesome as well. I really love that match. But uh, really, really cool. Uh, so now, you know, we, we, we've we spoken a lot about you being involved in many kind of intergender matches. We've spoken a lot about the, the female talent that you've gone up against, but you've had a lot of intergender ma- matches. You know, your first match on the scene back in June 2018 was an in- intergender match. Um, so this brings us to our first listener question uh, from our Wrestling with Jonas Facebook community page. And it's from Ashley Clements. Um, and he asks, uh, wh- what was it like to go up against uh, the bad boy, Joey Janela, uh, Kamikaze Pro last year? So it was the bad boy going up against the bad girl. And uh, it got rave reviews, that match. But it was pretty awesome. I mean, it, you, you not only fought in the arena, you fought around the arena, you fought out of the arena, um, in, onto a bus, into shops, off of a telephone box you got pile driven onto a car it was just super crazy and uh, I mean I, I, I've watched back and seen that match a few times now but uh, tell us about your experience how did it all come about first of all and then and then kind of tell us about your, your experience actually in the match with Joey that was it the last Kalahazi show I was at before the Joey Janela match I was just in a uh, McDonald's with obviously <clears throat> the Kalahazi night training open and the promoter and then, like, he pulls out his phone and, like, he writes it down who I've got the, uh, the main show, Renegade Force. And then he says, you've got Joey Jenner. Oh. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and then I see it get announced on, like, the website and, like, social media. I'm like, mate, it's real. It's real. I'm messing the bad boy. Yeah. And then, obviously, I got there and I was, like, really nervous, proper nervous. And then we had the match. And then after it just went literally viral and it's like I had so much adrenaline and honestly it was, it was just mental and all the, like the followers on Twitter as well. <laughs> there was lots. Yeah. It was, just, it was crazy. Like, some, some of them spots, Chantel, were just unreal, uh, you know, especially when you got outside the arena and, uh, I, 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 you know, you couldn't have staged some of that. I mean, f- going onto a bus, fighting in the shops on, on top of somebody's car. Tell us yeah. about some of them spots. Uh, tell us about your, your recollection of kind of how that match went down. I thought the match went like really well. Like, obviously, the adrenaline was constantly pumping for the match. And, like, obviously, when I took the car drive on the car. And then we went onto the bus as well. Like that was like a shock because I saw like he grabbed hold of me. It was like, oh, we're going to go to a bloody broken down bus. It was like <laughs> it was mad. But like I've never had really a match like that, so it did like it was really fun. I felt like it went like it was proper fun. And like as long as you enjoy yourself, that's all that matters. Yeah. It was yeah. like it was great. Um, and you also got the attention of uh, the Sun newspaper. I know they ran a, an online article about it. And uh, yeah. like you say, you, it, social media uh, just uh, went, it just exploded after that match. And uh, But uh, that that was pretty cool. And what I want to see, I want to see a rematch, Chantel. I want to see uh, the bad boy versus the bad girl part two, uh, <laughs> where you get your revenge. Uh, but uh, hopefully if he's over in the UK, um, I'd love to see that again. But yeah. uh, that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. Um then uh, another question for, from myself, really, is how do you manage to kind of balance your time? Because you, you're obviously studying at the moment. So you're, you're still in high school. Um, you, you, you've got to juggle that with a personal life and then wrestling shows at the weekend. And sometimes you wrestle during the week as well, Chantel. How yeah. do you manage How do you manage to organise your time and how do you fit it all in? How do you make it work? I honestly don't know, to be honest. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I train Monday at Cami. Um, so obviously Tuesday I do gym, Wednesday train, Thursday gym, Friday maybe wrestle, but like constantly school all the while as well in the week. And like, I don't know, I think like, it's like, it's, it's hard to explain, I don't know. Like, yeah. I'm sure your, your, your family and maybe your mum kind of keeps you organised and yeah. uh, runs a diary for you. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's important to have people kind of looking after you like that. But uh, we've got another question, this time um, from Richard from Turnbuckle TV. And Richard wants to know, um, who's your, your your toughest opponent that you've faced so far? 
Hmm. Um, That's a good question from Richard. Let's think. Um, it'll probably be either I release or or maybe Lucy Ali. Yeah, Lucy Ali as well. Yeah. No, that's some good answers there, some top talent there. Um, and then another uh, a fan question from our uh, Facebook community page from Kieran Reed. He asks, uh, what, were you, what would you consider your biggest accomplishment to date so far then, Chantal? Your biggest accomplishment? I think my biggest accomplishment was probably stepping in the room with Shanna, to be honest, and making it to the finals of the Camelot's Pro Fight of Females tournament. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, as I mentioned uh, at the top of the show, 2019 was definitely your biggest year, not only winning the Kamikaze Pro Live title twice, uh, but also becoming uh, the, the champ over in Cov Pro, um, SSW, WPW, making your debut for, for Rev Pro at their, their Queen of the Ring tournament yeah. in November. Uh, but you also voted WPW Female uh, of the Year, uh, their Match of the Year against Nightshade and Overall Wrestler of the Year over in WPW. Kamikaze Pro, I mean, that the fans in, in uh, Cam Pro, they absolutely love you. They, they voted you uh, match of the year, of course, for your Force Kent Anyway match against Joey Janela, uh, Fighting Female of the Year, Kamikaze Pro Live Wrestler of the Year, and MVP of the Year for 2019. So this leads us nicely to our next question from, from Kieran Reid again, who wants to know, what does 2020 have planned for you? And is there anything you have targeted for the year? So I've just listed kind of your, your, your fantastic year, your many accolades in 2019. Uh, 2020, uh, what, what, what uh, plans or kind of goals uh, do you have in mind to answer Kieran's question? Um, my goals for 2020 is basically just team the way it is, keep resting constantly, and hopefully in the bit long run, hopefully, get some like major promotion or something but I just want to travel the world to be honest this year yeah. just keep traveling and yeah. just keep doing what I love absolutely and uh, and Japan is obviously renowned for its um awesome female uh, women's wrestling promotions yeah uh, if, 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 you know do you uh, have any uh, desires to kind of wrestle over in Japan um and uh, you know any plans to maybe conquer Japan sometime in the future I would love to wrestle in Japan that's one of my like dreams and obviously also to get an AEW as well. That's a top goal of mine. Yeah. So literally just working towards that. No, that's that's really good. We'll keep our fingers crossed for you. So your next in action, um, I understand, for UPW in Exeter on the 23rd of February on their Rebellion card. Um, yeah. And I believe your, your your next appearance for uh, for Kamikaze Pro is on March the 15th. Um, do you know who you might be fighting on any of those shows, uh, Chantel, who, who your next opponents might be? Um, so at UPW, I've got someone called Lacey Lace. Okay. Um, and then on Kamikaze, I'm not sure yet. I don't know. Yeah, so it's a few weeks off, but uh, we'll definitely keep tabs on you. But uh, that's pretty much the end of our interview with Chantel Jordan on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. But Chantel, before we let you go, uh, this is an opportunity for you to kind of throw out any any plugs, any social media handles where we can find you on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Um, so, so tell my listeners of the Wrestling with Jonas podcast where they can reach out to you, say hi and find out more about Chantel Jordan. So my Facebook page is Chantel Jordan slash professional wrestler. Uh, my Twitter is Chantel Jordan 37 <clears throat> and then my Instagram is Chantel Jordan underscore. Cool. Cool. And I'll make sure that I've got those uh, those links and those uh, handles in the description to this podcast so that any of my listeners that want to find out more about Chantel Jordan, the bad girl, they can just click on those links and go and say hi and find out more uh, about one of the brightest prospects uh, the UK wrestling scene has uh, to offer at the moment. But uh, thank you, Chantel, for being a guest on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. I hope you've enjoyed the experience. Yeah. And uh, maybe somewhere down the line when you've cracked Japan, we'd love to have you uh, back on the on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast sometime in the future. Thank you so much. Uh, you're very, very welcome. So we look forward to doing more interviews in conjunction with Turnbuckle TV in the future. So stay tuned for those. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget to check out our website, WrestlingWithJohnners.com, where you can find everything Wrestling With Johnners related all in one place. Uh, and keep it tuned to the Wrestling With Johnners podcast for all of your weekly NXT and AEW updates, WWE and AEW pay-per-view reviews, exclusive interviews like this one here with Chantal Jordan, and so much more. And if you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, please don't forget to spread the word. Tell your friends and tell your family. And don't forget 
forget to subscribe to the Wrestling with Jonas podcast so you don't miss out a single episode and you get notified every time a new episode drops. So one final time, thank you very much to Chantal Jordan for coming on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast and to all of my listeners, thank you for listening and we'll catch up with you all again soon. 